Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to User One Productions. My name is David. In today's Unity tutorial, we're going to be going over a crate that you can unlock with a key. Let me dive right into Unity and show you the finished product, and then I'll be showing you how I accomplished this. So here we are in our scene. We have our door there, our ladder up there. If you guys have been following the series, we also have made a flashlight, but now you'll notice that there are two keys on the ground, as well as this box with a lock on it. If we walk up to the box, it says open or close with E. We press E and we notice it's locked. Alrighty. So let's go over here and pick up this key. And it's locked. So we must have the wrong key. This key might be used somewhere else down the line in the world or the, uh, the game that we're creating. Let's try out that second key on the ground. We pick it up and we walk over to the box and sure enough, it unlocks very nice and then we could have whatever inside whether it be a pickup piece of a puzzle health items or even weapons here we are prior to actually adding the crate and the two keys remember you guys everything that I use in this tutorial series whether it be models scripts sound effects etc there will always be a link in the description that you guys can download that stuff from so from that link I'm going to grab the testing box and key and I'm going to click and drag them into the unity project. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to right click on assets and create a new folder for models. And then those two models that we just added I'm going to throw in that folder. Let's focus on the key first. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to choose the FBX file. And I'm just going to click and drag it right into Unity. We will notice that it has a light and a camera attached to it. So what we need to do is actually separate all three of these items. What we're going to do is right click on key FBX and unpack prefab completely. Inside there I'm just going to take what's called Taurus. That is the key object. I'm going to rename that key. And then I'm going to click and drag it outside of everything else and then we can just delete it. So now we have this key right here. I'm actually going to scale it down a little bit and rotate it so it sits on the ground. Something like this. You can go ahead and press play and make sure the scaling of your key is the right size. That looks good for right now. What I'm going to do next is go to our scripts folder and then I'm going to download and bring in the pickup key script right here and we can assign that to the key object. Before going any further I want to open up this script and just go over what's happening in here so that way you guys can understand and learn a little bit. Pretty much what's going on inside the script is when we go over to the key we press E the key gets deactivated and it reactivates an empty object that we will have in our inventory. Let's go over the script real quick. Up here, we notice that we have the things that we can play around with. So we have a public game object, key object. That is going to be the actual model on the ground that we have to pick up. We have public game object, inventory object. So we will dive into a small little inventory system for right now. Next up, we have public game object, pick up text. This is the text we're going to be displaying when we hover over. A public audio source for when we pick up the key. And then we have a bool just saying if we are in reach using that reach tool that we created during the door tutorial. Inside the start function we want to make sure in reach is false, pickup text is false, and inventory is false. Because for one we don't have the key already and we don't want to start the game away from the key and then automatically pick it up. We don't want that so that's why we start everything as false. Right here we have two voids on trigger enter and on trigger exit. Pretty much if we are looking at the key. In reach becomes true and we activate the text saying to pick it up. And then if we stop looking at it, it does the opposite. Now inside void update, if we are in reach and we press down interact, pretty much if we are collided with that object, that is what in reach is. Now we get to the void update. If we're in reach and we press down interact, the key object becomes false and it also plays the sound of the key. The object in our inventory becomes true and then the text to pick it up disappears. That's pretty much all that's going on within the key script. So let's press our key object and start assigning stuff. So as I said before, the key object is this top one right here for key object, of course. We have the inventory object. So what we're going to do is actually go into our first person controller. I'm going to right click, create empty, and I'm just going to call this inventory. And then inside that inventory, we want to create another empty object and rename the key for whatever it's going to be used for. In my instance, I'm going to call it the box key. Pressing that key object one more time. Now that box key that we just created can go right into inventory object. Next up, we need to set up the pickup text. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into the HUD of the character. This open and close, I'm just going to duplicate and I'm going to rename that to pickup. And then I'll make sure to change the text here to pickup. 
Let's assign that to the key inside the script. And now we just need to add the key sound. Again, you guys, everything is linked in the description, so I'm just going to click and drag pick up key right here. I'll be going into the sounds object on our character controller. And then you could take any one of these already made sounds and just duplicate it and rename it. Just like that. And then we will assign it to the audio source right there. Cool. Now we have everything set up so we can close the inventory, the HUD, the sounds, and our first person character. The final thing we need to do to make this work is if you press key, add component, we need a box collider on there. And we need to press is trigger, so that way when we look at it, it triggers itself. Let's maximize on play and press play. We now have a key on the ground where if we look at it, text pops up saying pick up. If we look away, the text disappears. Let's look at it one more time and press E. The sound jingles and the key disappears and it's now in our inventory. Let me exit out of this, uncheck max on play. And let's actually see what's going on in the hierarchy as we do this. So if I open up the character, go to the inventory and then just watch key here and box key here. Okay. So what is going on is the key object, this one right here is going to uncheck itself. So it becomes unactive. And then box key is going to get checked so that way that object is part of us now. That's what the box is going to be looking for to see if this object is on in the uh, hierarchy. So once I press E, you'll notice that automatically the key gets unchecked and box key gets checked. Cool. Everything's going according to plan which is awesome. Let's go back to our models folder right here. I'm going to go to testing box and I'm going to import the FBX file of it. Again, we have a camera and a light attached to it, but what I'm going to do this time is right click it, unpack prefab completely, and I'm just going to delete camera and lamp. Now we have this full object that I'm going to scale down to accordingly to my needs. I'm going to also rotate it and bring it up a little bit. I'll also be going to the scripts folder and importing the open box script. We can assign that to the box object. And let's go over the script so that way we can see what's going on. You'll notice this script is a little bit bigger, but don't fear. This is a very simple system and I'll just go over what's going on here. So you'll see we have an animator right at the top here. That's going to be how the box opens. We need to make an animation for it. And then we have a public game object, the key object needed. This is going to be the thing inside of our inventory that gets turned on when we collect a key. So without this object being active in the hierarchy, we cannot open the box. Next up, we have open text. We also have another type of text, which is the key missing text. That's going to tell us if the thing is locked or not. We also have an audio source for when the thing opens. We also have two bools, which is one checks if we are in reach of the box. And then the other one says if it's open, the start function is very similar to how the key is. Our in reach is set to false. All the text is false as well. Scrolling down, we can see on trigger exit on trigger enter. Pretty much on trigger enter, if we're looking at the object, in reach becomes true and then the open text becomes true. And vice versa, if we look away, those get deactive. Now, the first statement in the void update right here checks key object needed active in hierarchy true. So this portion of the script only works if that object in our inventory is active. It also checks to see if we are in reach and if we press interact. And if everything is good from this line of code right here, this is what happens. The key object needed becomes false because we've used that key. We won't need it anymore. The open sound plays. We set open in the box objects animator to true. That way it opens up. We turn off the text that says open or close. And then we just set the boxes open to true. Then we have a quick else if statement. If everything is true, if we're in reach and we press interact, but the key is not in our inventory, if it's deactivated, the open text becomes false and the missing key text becomes true. So that way it'll display it's locked. Now we have a quick little if open statement at the very bottom here to close it all off. If the box is open, I've made it so the box collider becomes false and this current script we're reading off of also becomes false. The reason I've done this is because I found a bug where I open the box and I walk far away from it and I still press E and it pops up. It's locked even though we've already opened it and everything. So by doing this, it ensures that bug does not occur. We can then go back into Unity to our box object. We're going to add a component. It's going to be animator. We can then click and drag this animator to the box object. Key needed object. We need to go into our character, inventory, and box key. 
the open text, I'm just going to go into HUD and then open and close just like the door. Key is missing text. So now what I'm going to do is back into HUD. I'm just going to duplicate the pickup, rename it to missing key. I'll also open that up and get rid of E because we don't have a button press on that current statement. And then inside the text, I'm just going to write it's locked. We can now assign that missing key text to the missing text right here. In our sounds folder, I'm going to click and drag the open padlock sound. Just like before, I'll go into the sounds and duplicate one of these, rename it, and then just swap out the sounds right here. Perfect. Make sure you assign that in the box itself. And now we need to create an animation. This is going to be very simple. I'm just going to scroll in on the box, go to animation, pull this up a tad and create. I'm going to name this box idle. I'm going to add a property and I'm going to right click on transform box bottom box top lock and lock base. So that way every piece of this is now in our I'm going to highlight this first keyframe control C. I'll click right here. Add new clip. And we're going to name this box opens. I'm now going to press control V at the zero zero mark. So that way we start with it closed. I'm going to scroll out and at the two mark, I'm going to press control V again. I'm also going to put a keyframe at the one second mark, just like that. We can now press this red button to start recording. And now we can animate this box any way that we want. I'm just going to make a very simple animation for this key lock opening. So at the 40 mark, I'm going to go press lock. It's going to shoot up like this. And then at the one second mark, it's going to actually be like this. So that way it's opened. Let's ensure that it's in the right spot like that. And then I'll scroll over to the two second mark. And that is when the box top can flip open like that. Now, if we watch our animation, we'll notice that the top of the box actually opens before the lock opens. The way we fix that is let's just scroll all the way to the beginning of the animation. We're going to go over to the box tops transform. Click these three dots and press copy component. And at the one second mark, I'm going to just paste those values. Now, the lock opens and then the top opens up. Very nice. Let's go to the animator tab and check out what's going on in this box. So we have box idle and box opens. Let's go to parameters and add a bool. This is just going to be open. Lowercase, keep that in mind. Let's right click on box idle and make a transition to box opens. Click the transition, add a parameter and make sure it's open true. We can also go up to this box has open time, untick this, open the settings and then fix duration, untick that, close it all up. The final thing that we need to do is actually click each one of these animations, find them inside of our assets here and just make sure loop time is unchecked. Just like this. Now the final part to this whole thing, click on the testing box or whatever object you want to open, add component, box collider, shape it up to the size that you need. Something like that looks pretty good. Make sure it is a trigger. And now let's play the game. Max on play and see what's going on. All right. If we walk over to the box, open or close, press E. We notice it's locked. We look away, the text disappears. We can walk away from it, press E. Make sure there's no other text popping up. We can do it as many times as we want and it'll stay locked. Until we go over here and pick up this key. We now have the key in our inventory. Let's open and it unlocks and opens. And then we could set up, you know, something to pop up in there for an object to pick up, but we'll go over that in a future tutorial. This is a really easy system guys, and this can work in so many different ways. With all that being said, guys, remember I have a download link to everything we have done in this tutorial series and previous series in the description. Let me know in the comment section what you guys want to see next. And if you guys are enjoying this tutorial series, remember to drop me a like, subscribe, click that notification bell so that way you don't miss an upload. And thank you guys for everything. This is User1 Production signing off for now. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.